Hey everyone and welcome back to the Nerdy Multiverse and finally another breakdown and review. As today we will be going through the entirety of the Echo series and giving our thoughts on each episode and the series as a whole. As well as breaking down some of the easter eggs that are shown throughout the show. Episode 1 being titled Chaffa, Episode 2 being titled Lawak, Episode 3 being titled Tuklo, Episode 4 being titled Taloha, and finally episode episode 5 being titled Maya. Now, each of these episode titles have their different meanings. Shafa, Tuklo, and Larak are all ancestors of Maya's and have strong spiritual connections with her as we see throughout the series. And Taloha is the name of Maya's mother that passed away. Shafa was one of the first Choctaw women to gain cosmic powers, and Larak in the comics was actually a host of the Phoenix Force. Now, obviously we explore more with these characters in their respective episodes, so more on them in a bit. Now obviously last time we saw Maya was in Hawkeye and she ended the series off there by killing Kingpin or quote unquote killing Kingpin. Now I did explain what exactly happened there in depth all the way back when I made the breakdowns for the Hawkeye series but that was such a long time ago, almost two years now so let's go through it again briefly. So in Hawkeye's finale it was made to look as if Kingpin was killed by Echo but obviously that is not the case as we have seen in trailers for the series and by what actually happened in the comics. In the comics, he was also shot in the eye and it caused him to go blind for quite some time. Obviously, with his power and his money, he was able to repair it though. This is exactly what happened in that finale and where we pick up in this series. But they do actually briefly catch you up on everything by replaying scenes and such in the first episode. And speaking of the first episode, let's start off by briefly talking about it. Now obviously there will be spoilers in this video, so you have been warned. The first episode of the series explores a lot of Maya's origins and past. When she was a child, her mother's passing, and during and before the Hawkeye series, and then of course very briefly, the present day after the events of the Hawkeye series, and dealing with life after she quote unquote killed Kingpin. A great premiere for the series in my opinion that had the perfect mix of development, storytelling, backstory exploration, and of course, incredible action sequences. As well as a fun cameo or appearance of Daredevil and a fight scene that he had with Echo. And I am sure that we will be seeing a lot more of those two interacting going forward in the MCU and I would not be surprised if Echo appears in Daredevil Born Again. As Echo and and Daredevil have a strong relationship and tons of interactions in the comic books. Episode 2, being titled Lawak, explores the backstory of Maya's ancestor, Lawak, and her connection that is sprouting within Maya herself and how her resilience and will to never give up plays into Maya's situations in this episode. As she returns back to her hometown and begins messing with Kingpin's operations that are still operating there, as she sends a message to his army and seeks power herself as it is time for a queen in her own words. Sending her first message and making her first move against Kingpin's operations by exploding their armory building and all of their imported products products, but something that will obviously not go unanswered. A very intriguing story driven episode that gave each and every character in it their own shine and a bit of storytelling as well. Which brings us into episode 3, titled To Glow, as we explore the third ancestor of Maya's and the cunningness that she brought to the world with her will to never stop fighting for those that she loved. This episode we see a ton of conflict and not not just the absolutely incredible action sequences. More specifically, Maya's conflict within herself and with her family that have now figured out that she has returned home without telling them. Her cousin being more upset that she didn't come visit her and Tula being more worried that Maya is going to bring New York's problems to Tamaha. 
This episode was a bit of a slower run than the others, but not in a bad way. We got to focus on Maya's reunions with her family while also the emerging threat of Kingpin's return, and the phenomenal and gritty action that we got in this one really reminded me of the original Netflix Marvel series. Bringing us into episode 4 titled Taloha. This episode sees the exploration of more of Maya's past and her upbringing with Kingpin, displaying how ruthless he was just as he was in the Netflix Daredevil series, but also displaying just how manipulative he really was with Maya. To then move on to the present day and explore the return of Kingpin there and his reunion with Maya, after the fact that he was thought to be dead by her hand. We see him again offer her an empire with his power, but we all know this is just another move to get her back and have more skillful muscle with him, as in the end, he would just get more power from her. After suffering from a vision of her past ancestors, Maya finally reunites with Chula, who has experienced the same exact thing, where we learn that Maya's mother had her own abilities when she was alive, as she was a healer herself. And now, all of these ancestors, extending all the way to the first Choctaw woman, are now echoing through Maya. Maya ends up returning to Fisk at the end of the episode as he offers her up on his deal once more. But she refuses and is ready to kill him once and for all. But she also ends up refusing to do that and walking away from him after he explains to her how he killed his own father. Confirming that yes, the Netflix Marvel shows are indeed canon now and a part of the MCU timeline. Ending off with Maya leaving Tamaha but Kingpin now furious at his quote unquote future heir has left him. I really enjoyed this episode as well. Now, it may have dialed down extremely on any sort of action sequences, but it was a very interpersonal focused episode that had so many connections and incredible and emotional storytelling. Which, of course, brings us into the fifth and final episode of the series titled Maya, culminating everything from before into Maya's conclusion in this part of her story, at least. As Chula said in the last episode, everything and everyone now echoes through her. In this episode, we see Kingpin make his final moves against Maya for the time being, as he goes after those closest to her and invades her home of Tamaha during the powwow. I think that this showed just how ruthless him and his forces are and how willing they are to get their messes cleaned up. No matter the circumstance, even if it's during such a memorable and beautiful cultural experience. As he captures Chula and Bonnie, later holding them hostage and vowing to kill them and the rest of Maya's family in retaliation for all of this trouble. But once Maya returns back home, she is met by the spirit of her own mother, who guides her through her final steps in gaining her abilities and the courage to fight on and let go of her internal pain. Now, with the powwow commencing and the beautiful culture of the Chakta Nation being displayed for the crowds watching and the audience watching the series at home, they are also put at risk, as Kingpin's men have surrounded the area undercover and are just waiting for a signal to attack and ruin everything. But of course, just in time, everyone comes together as Maya summons her powers in her brand new suit, inspired by her own culture to take down Fisk and his men alongside Chula, Biscuits, Henry, and Bonnie, as she uses the mimicking and echoing powers of her ancestors to guide herself and her family to fight off the enemies. After taking everyone down, Maya goes after Kingpin, but instead of attacking him, she uses her healing ability on him, just as her mother used on the woodpecker when she was a child. Now, by doing this, they appear in Kingpin's own past, making making him remember what he went through as a child and how it all led to him killing his abusive father. As she offers to free him from this pain and the memories that he keeps holding onto, which has forged him into the man that he is today, ruthless and violent. They exit the visions and Kingpin does get away and it's not very clear whether or not Maya was really successful with her efforts or not, but either way, it doesn't really change much in the long run as we see later on with Kingpin. 
Finally, coming full circle, Maya is comfortable with being home again and is happy to be with her family that she grew so distant with. As they sit down and have dinner together as a family for the first time in so many years. But as for Kingpin himself, the post credit scene teases exactly what he will be doing next as he returns back to his empire and home of New York City. As he sits aboard his plane, the news plays on the television speaking of the city needing a candidate for a mayor. Someone who is willing to fight. A brawler. Exactly Kingpin's description. So I think it's pretty clear that we will be seeing Fisk run for mayor of New York City, which will likely take place in Daredevil Born Again. Where we can also assume, or at least hope, that Echo will return to the MCU as well. So we can see her storylines with Daredevil from the comic books get adapted into live action, and the future of her and Kingpin get expanded on even more. I have also also heard rumors that White Tiger will be making her debut in that series as well. But now with the Netflix shows being canon, could you imagine if Kingpin is forced to run for Maya? But now with the Netflix shows being canon, could you imagine if Kingpin is forced to run for mayor against another familiar face and name? That being none other than Luke Cage himself. Luke Cage has run and been mayor numerous times in the comics, and he would be a great political rival for Fisk, while the other heroes take on the underground and hero aspect of his other schemes. Now, I have seen so much hate and negativity regarding the series, and personally, I do disagree with it. I really love this show, and I think this was a perfect full introduction and exploration of Echo as a character, and set up for the future of the street-level stories in the MCU, and what connections she will have in the future herself. I could honestly go as far as saying that this was my favorite Marvel series that they have done so far, excluding the Netflix ones, and the representation of the Choctaw Nation was beautifully done and executed in such a great manner, which was super awesome to see. The exploration of character, the tone, the music, the acting, the gritty action sequences, just about everything was absolutely wonderful in my opinion. The only nitpick or issue that I really think I have was with the final battle as it felt a bit rushed, but that was about it. Each episode had its own special attributes and standouts, and the finale was a great send-off to Echo even with it being the shortest series to date, with there only being 5 episodes total, which honestly does make me want more. But of course, seeing Vincent D'Onofrio return back to his gritty and cunning roots as Kingpin was absolutely amazing amazing, and Aliqua Cox was the perfect person to pick for Echo. I could not think of a single person who could play the character so well. Huge props to her, she went above and beyond. But yeah, overall, in my opinion, I liked every episode of Echo, and I thought that it was a great series. As an entire series, I think I would give it an 8 or 8.5 out of 10. But of course, I would like to hear your thoughts on this episode and the series as a whole, so make sure to leave them down below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed our breakdown and review on these episodes and the series, don't forget to give it a like. And with that being said, we will see you all the next time that we go through and explore the nerdy.